I had a routine about um, how my grandma should go on Super Nanny, and I had a routine about um, why Nigerian guys can't chat with girls in a club. Okay, now I'm going to go to your grandma first. Mm. Why would she go on Super Nanny? To be Super Nanny or to have the guidance from Super Nanny? Oh, no, no, no. She, no, she, she wouldn't take guidance from Super Nanny. She'd probably, <laughs> she'd probably kill Super Nanny. Um, yeah, she would go on there just to, to, to be the to new be type Super of Super Nanny. Because, you know, Super Nanny, you know, she, she's very PC, you know, like she talks to the kids. Like they've got rights and opinions, you know. Like Timothy, you need to be five seconds, five, four. That's three. fine. What what gets me is there's no five seconds, then you're getting a slap. Yeah, see, that's why my grandma go on. My grandma should be like Timothy, you need five seconds to put it on. Five, one, <laughs> <laughs> and is that how you were brought up? Yeah, yeah. Um, luckily, I, I kind of learned my lesson after the few, first few beatings. I kind of thought, okay, I need to behave because I don't want to. I don't want my, you know, my skin to be sore anymore. So um, yeah, I kind of learned my lesson. I kind of behaved for like most of my childhood. And what kind of stuff did you do in order to kind of be punished in that way? Just stupid things around the house. Like me and my younger cousin, um, we were always up to something no good. Like we'll go out and play like in, in the corridor or something, and then something will smash, and it's like oh, okay, and we know what time it is now. Like my, my grandma even had um, she had a wooden stick, and she named it. That she used to beat us. That, that's how often she used to beat us. She, she named it. What, um, what was it called? It was called Tom Tom. <laughs> yeah. She was ahead of the game, right? Yeah, yeah she, exactly. Because she, she knew, knew where it was going. She was ahead of the world, right? <laughs> <laughs> and is your grandma still around now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's um, in, in Southall. Um, yeah, she's probably at home. From the end, she's repping their grandma, yeah, right? <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah, big up on the Southall. <laughs> Southall people. Yeah, but she's at home probably, I don't know, watching over Pete of Deal or No Deal or something. And how did your family react when you decided to become a comedian? Because you said you were an architecture student. Yeah. Did you graduate? Yeah, I graduated, and then my family thought I was going to be an architect. Um, and then <laughs> so I you hadn't told them about this secret career you planned for yourself. No, they knew I was doing comedy, but to them it was just a, a hobby. Bit of fun. Yeah, they didn't think that, they didn't know that I was taking it as seriously as I was taking it. Okay, so then, when did it become? A career choice like was that something you decided when you were quite young um no like when i was a kid i was i was nothing I, nothing like i thought i'd be now like when i was a kid i was kind of shy i was a bit of a, I was a max geek a bit of a boffin um comedy didn't even occur to me it wasn't until actually when i, I won the award and i thought okay i'm getting paid you know I, how am i going <laughs> to do this and i thought okay yeah and then eventually i, I spent more time going to comedy clubs than, than doing my, my coursework and stuff I was like, yeah, this makes sense. But um, then I had to tell my family, and they were, um, yeah, they were, they were thrilled. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, I've seen one of your sketches or one of your stand-ups online, mm -hmm. and you talk about your family, and I think it is your grandma as well, there or your yeah. mum, who keep asking you when are you going to become an architect. Is that something that they yeah. still sometimes question? Not anymore. Every now and again, my grandma might slip in architecture into the conversation to sort of remind me that I've still got it. You know, yeah. you know architect, you know, you have that, you know? I was like, yeah, I don't know, yeah, I know. that was about four years ago now. Um, but um, yeah, my mum's cool. Um, my grandma is slowly getting there. When I, when I first graduated, she, she didn't have it all. She was like, come here, you know, it's real funny. Go on, tell me a joke, tell me a joke. You know? Did you ever try? Did you, did you ever think, like, grandma, sit down, do you know what? I'm going to make you laugh now. No, my grandma's tough. She's a tough crowd, man. you you got to be, like, Chris Rock, Eddie Murphy, which probably combined could probably do a joke, and my grandma still be like, "That's how I like. That's not how I like." Good. <laughs> is your grandma a funny person then, or is she funny without knowing it? Yeah. By the way, she is. She's very eccentric, and she'll be funny without. She won't think that it's funny, but I ask her, I'm like, "I'm having that, <laughs> and that's going in my set, man. I'm doing that." And she just does things that. Like, oh, grandma. <laughs> So you said that it was only when you won that award that you started to think about doing comedy. Mm. What encouraged you to go and do that in the first place? Something somewhere may have made you recognise I have the ability to stand up because comedy is not easy. No, no, it's, it's, it's an art form. I need to probably like hone your craft. And it's a difficult one. I mean, this is me speaking from just watching people within a TV so trying to attempt to be a comedian. Yeah. I'm actually talking about Fresh Prince right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he dies. Yeah. yeah. Um, but do, do you know what I mean? Like, you've got to wait for the crowd. Yeah. What point did you realise I might have the ability to win this student award? Well, I, I didn't think I had... I didn't think I was going to win it. But um, I, was, I was surprised to win that. But I was for... Because when I was in college um, at Richmond, I, I did drama, and I was always given the comedy roles. Okay. And then 
like after my first year doing architecture, it wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be. I was a bit bored. So I thought I want to do something during the summer that's going to get me enthused. And I was full about comedy. And I saw an advert in Time Out um, for a gig in, a, in Old Street. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this. I might as well now. Um, you know, it's either now or never. So I went down, did five minutes, and I, I, I bombed. So I, said, I died. It was, oh, it was so <laughs> ridiculous. There was, there was about ten people there. Um, five were comedians, the other five... Were the comedians friends? <laughs> yeah, probably. And there was two other people playing pool behind me. It was a really awful gig. And I went on stage thinking I was cool. And I did some rubbish joke about chatting up a girl or something like that. And even though it was awful, afterwards I was like, I enjoyed being on stage, man. Yeah. You got the buzz. That's when you felt the buzz, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like I wanted to do it again. Even though I, I bombed, I, I wanted Did to do it Did anyone laugh or at least like giggle a little bit? That would be even worse. That's, that's Is that worse? That's nothing, there's nothing worse <laughs> when, you're, when you're dying and you hear one person go, ha! Let's say, let's say, let's say, one clap and that's it. It's like, oh, thanks. That's an insult. You're better off just staying yeah, quiet. Exactly. Though. Yeah. Don't patronise me. I know it's bad. <laughs> yeah. That's how it was. So what was the gig after that? Like, did you start building a portfolio for yourself? Oh yeah. After that, then um, I kind of, kind of, you know, learned how to do the whole set thing. You know, like trying to get to five minutes. Um, the next gig after that, I think was a uh, was a gig in Camden, and I, I did, I did a bit about my grandma, and I did something about um, oh, I think it was Sven got an accent. So at the time, I think he was having an affair with Rika Johnson. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, so I did a joke about that, and it got a laugh. I was like, okay, now I'm, I'm working out how this whole routine goes. And then from there, I just kind of kept on gigging to build up a bit of a reputation as a solid performer. Good stuff. Now, mm. um, I mentioned this earlier. On your yeah. website, right, mm. I read this, and there's a chance this is me exposing myself and having the biggest sedge moment on radio. Now, a sedge moment, if you're listening as well and you don't know what it is, is a moment in time where I do something really, really, really stupid. <laughs> and my friends and family are the ones who actually aimed it. Probably my sister first. And then it's kind of grown since then. And now anytime anything like that happens, whether it's to me or to them, it's recognised as a sedge <laughs> moment. Right? So on your website, okay, um, yeah. The Guardian made the comment about you saying he specialises in laid back, on the nose material, yeah. chopping down falls of all colour, both in day-to-day -day life and in the media. Yeah. What the hell does that mean? It just means that, um, like, it's like a lot of like stereotypes and assumptions, you know, racial stereotypes as well, um, about young black guys. I kind of just make a joke out of it. I just disprove it, you know. But it says all colours. So do you just make black jokes, or no, do you no, go no. into all races I, I and kind of tapping it? Yeah, I'll, I'll do jokes about you know, all people. Just like. Uh, there's stereotypes about all different people that I just kind of just make a joke out because I, I think stereotypes to me are just, just people's ignorance. You no, know? they're not getting not getting to know you. They're just making an assumption based on what you look like or your culture or something. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So yeah. But I, I had it the other day. Um. I was I was in a taxi going to a gig, and the taxi driver he turned on the radio and it, it was some hip hop, and um he looked to me in the rearview mirror and, and he went uh, so uh, mate are uh, you into this sort of stuff? And before I could even answer the question, he jumped in and went yeah I suppose you have to be in it in your lot. Oh, how can it, how it could he actually that? said that. You know, the only how it could have been any worse was if he left the hip hop music playing, offered me a spliff of weed, and then instead of <laughs> taking me to my gig, stopped outside the nearest Nando's, went there you go, heard about you guys and chicken, got out of the car, got out of the car. Just yeah, that's ignorant. So yeah, and how can I just? Did you get the it? chance to respond to the cab driver? Um, no, no, no. I, I was so shocked. I was like, man, why would you made that assumption? Like just looking at me, like. But it happens every day, and I think sometimes you don't realise it's happening to you until it's too late. Yeah. That happens, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Has that happened to you too? Yeah, 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 it happens sometimes, you know, like, something happens and then you go home and you tell someone, and you're like, no, 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 that was a bit racist, man. <laughs> yeah, it was, so I didn't realise. Do you know, once, while I was at uni, it was about, I hate to say this now, it was about four or five years ago now. <laughs> I was in my first year though, so it's not too bad. Okay. And the song Dutty Wine was huge then. Oh, Do you yeah. remember Tony Mountain? Yeah, yeah. So that yeah. song was big and I really loved my bash about it. I was like, yeah, <laughs> this is what it's all about. This is the music I'm telling you all, right? So I got to uni and I went to uni in Kiel, which is in Stoke-on-Trent. If you don't know where that is, it's in between Birmingham and yeah, Manchester. I know Stoke. I know. And oh, that's big. A lot of people don't even know where that is, right? Yeah. 
So I go to uni there with this London girl who worked in Central London. I was like, yeah, 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 part of me. And there was just bare segregation everywhere. So I was like, all right, fine, I can cope with that. I get that people like to stick to their own because they know that and they're yeah. comfortable with it, etc. Yeah. But when I'm out, I like my music. I like to enjoy myself. So yeah. that one come on and there's like hot walk and all those kind of tunes, yeah? yeah? And so I was dancing away and a few of my friends were around, but not with me. This one black girl who I didn't know come up to me and she goes, she danced really well, I was just like, she thinks I danced well. She danced really well for an Asian girl. And I was like, oh, hold on, gosh. what do you mean? She's like, you know the dutty wine? And I was just like, hold on a minute. I don't want to act like some London girl, but I really wanted to just step to her and say, what do you mean do I know the dutty yeah. wine? Like, seriously. But just, What was I saying? You danced really well, full stop. I know, but she, she was trying to pay me a compliment. It's, it's just, yeah. it, she fell flat <laughs> on her face, I thought. But talking about old music, mm. you have contributed to my old school classics for today. Yeah, man. So we're going to start off with The People's Choice. And Shani from High Wickham has requested Chante Moore straight up. Do you remember that tune? Yeah, I remember that. When he said that tune, I was like, do you know what? I completely forgot about that, but yeah. it's a great song. Following that will be My Choice. Yeah. And I've gone for something a little bit more cheesy. I've gone for R. Kelly and Snake. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, See? okay. I remember that. What I like to do is bring out songs that you kind of forget. Yeah. Um, but you have come here with a classic. Well. Well, I was hoping that, you know, the weather would represent it, but I kind of... Yes, you did say, if it's sunny, we'll play this one. Now, mm. I'll give you the choice. Do you want to change your choice? No. You have two songs to decide what you want to change in, if you'd like. 